Hi and welcome. Thanks for tuning in to my channel. If you're new here, welcome into the studio. If you're a returning guest, thanks again for taking the time to drop in and say hello. In today's discussion, I wanted to expand on another video that um, I had um, uploaded earlier, uh, which was to speak about the different type of sketchbooks that you can begin to develop the types of paper that might be um, useful for the type of products and mediums that you want to integrate into your sketchbook. And I wanted to expand on that in how do you develop imagery that begins to speak your story, your color palette, things that might interest you, um, not only for immediate usage, but something that you can later develop into broader concepts, themes, and imagery. So again, um, thanks for stopping by. Um, my name is Janice and I'm here to just share some information that I've uh, developed to help me um, along the path of defining what content I want to include into paintings and series um, and then later turn back into my sketchbooks for um, suggestions on where I may begin a painting and um, how I can expand on a, a series. Um, so I'm going to take some images that I have within the books I have in front of me and share some thoughts on how you can just go about everyday life and cultivate and just find images that speak to you in whatever path you know throughout the day you go on. Um, they can be just something you know you see every day and you know the little gnome in front of your house you know catches you and uh, you know you sort of greet one another in and out the door um, you know, how can you use that in your work? Can that be an identifier to your work? Is the, something about the colors speak to you? Is it a place that you pick this up that, um, you know, speaks to you and, you know, memory recalls? So those might be um, suggestions for what content you can just begin to uh, store, almost like your database. And my database is going to be different than yours. What speaks to me is obviously going to be different than what speaks to you. And in the same way that we, um, you know, identify with different clothing or colors that we wear, what makes us comfortable and what is it that we can bring into our lives that um, makes us feel uh, more of who we are as an individual. So whether that's, again, through the medium, the color palette, what it says about your, um, you know, um, place of birth, the language you speak, um, something you feel really deeply connected to, or, um, you know, a purpose-driven um, identifier, those are messages that you might want to include in your painting, but how do you sort of get to that broader or more narrow place, you have to start broader and narrow that down. So these are some places to start. So, um, you know, in my everyday life, in my, uh, you know, personal space, um, in my bedroom area, I put my laundry. So um, on the day that I was walking past this large basket of clothes on the floor, I saw that, um, wow, that's a really cool color palette. I really like that. I love um, deep, rich color, and um, it also had this, I happen to have thrown my hair dryer there, so it had the cord from that. And that was like, wow, it's kind of, you know, with this abundance of color, and I've got the line that's almost like an abstract painting um, where I'm combining the strength and saturation and stability to hold that composition with the color, but I've got the line that gives me that flow throughout the space that I might want to include on my painting or three-dimensional um, item that I want to develop. 
I could then, you know, take this and use it as reference for my color palette for whatever medium, acrylic, oil, gouache, watercolor, um, pastel. Um, so I'm not limited, you know, to the next expansion of this concept. Um, but I've got it in front of me and so I can use it as default in how can I convey whatever it is about this into my next step forward. Um, so I can also um, just go right into a sketchbook and use, you know, the paper that I've been given. Um, here I think this was um, maybe acrylic and I've used some pencil, uh, graphite pencils, which I can take, immerse those in water. They become very fluid and rich, very saturated, depending on if it's a H or a B. Um, the softer the uh, graphite is, um, it'll have the B letter after it, and then the more uh, intensity I'm gonna get out of that. So that's, you know, another um, just random uh, color palette that I'm working with. You know, it could be out of my head. It could be something that I um, saw. It could be, um, you know, an experience I remember from the course of the day. Um, here, I've also uh, done something similar with a different color palette and included this um, mesh which is like a plastic bag from, you know, onions, garlic, whatever it was, to overlay on top of my um, color here. There's a green one here. I don't know if it shows up, and a black. And so I can begin to expand on texture and, you know, what does that mean in moving forward? Do I want to potentially work with paper mache or, do I want to include plastics on my larger two-dimensional surface that I might want to use this as reference for? Uh, still further, I might find type that I find interesting and um, want to include that. So I just found this type, it was on, in a magazine, found these um, other images, and I like the way the shapes sort of blended and morphed into one another. Here, I've kind of just left it really simple. I haven't included any other paint on top of the surface. And this is, you know, one off where I'm just including the strength of these silhouettes um, for that alone to develop. How do I want to break up my picture plane in the two dimensional format? Um, and these are kind of like exercises where I was developing more of a strength for my composition. Who doesn't like a good movie? And so I like black and white movies, some um, really movies of any genre. And here I just uh, stopped my video. Um, I then printed images from my TV screen and then I sort of put those together. And I like the strength of black and white, which I then had used to then move forward with a painting as this, um, you know, based off of this. But what I found for myself is that my strength is not in painting with black and white. So for me, this was a really good exercise. I found out that black and white is not really so cut and dry. It's really challenging and there's attributes to each medium and each format that you become comfortable with in, you'll find like a natural um, acuity towards certain mediums and you have strengths and specific interests that will draw you to each. But my, I found out through this exercise that, you know, again, um, Maybe my gift is not in working just with simplified, that limited of a palette. But I do like the strength of the figures here, and so they spoke to me, and I did use those um, in another way. So that's something else that you can uh, work with.
weekend, you know, I'm, I'm out, I pick up um, some other imagery. I'm not going to um, use this for any other purpose, but in my book, sort of high to low art. Um, this is somebody else's, you know, figures here, but I kind of give this person a crown, you know, a little thought bubble with some type here. So, um, kind of make it my own. I'm not going to reutilize their imagery in a larger uh, piece um, because that wouldn't be, you know, something I'm interested, comfortable with, or, you know, have any uh, reason to do. Um, other um, ways, just type other found imagery and then collaging on top of that. But, you know, if I had an urge to kind of um, register a thought on uh, social events, you know, I might want to include that. Um, all of us at some point have been in a museum, and how can I just do a quick pencil sketch of a painting that I enjoyed looking at? And then I can bring it home and look at it again and say, you know, what is it about that painting that spoke to me? Was it the composition? Was it the way the figures speak to one another? Uh, the communication amongst those? Was it the color palette that drew me in? The size of the painting? The way the um, materials were used unconventionally? Um, or simply just, you know, again, trying to develop um, my rendering skills. Here, this was some magazine I was kind of looking at as a destination to travel, and then sort of went over the blocks um, from the photograph that was in the magazine and tried to break out the picture planes. Um, very um, aware of Richard Diebenkorn's work, so I love the way he breaks up the picture plane and sort of a similar color palette. So. Um, you know, these are things that you kind of have in the back of your head and you may not intentionally, you know, feel motivated to reproduce somebody else's work or, but what is it that you can gain from that um, exercise, if you will, here? Um, so that moving forward, when you're not working on this, you have the skills and the intuitive um, ability to make it your own because you've kind of you know, are comfortable with some foundational skills. Um, some more photography that was in the New York Times. This was an image of um, people holding up banners in another country. And I kind of, you know, made the signage into M&Ms so that, you know, these people are parading for M&Ms um, and kind of try to bring humor into the message here, um, you know, change the, the message of that. And then, um, again, if I'm just working in my book and sort of free flow, how can I use, um, here this was probably gouache, has a little more opacity than watercolor, so it's um, maybe a more desirable product to work in a sketchbook. And um, here, I just did a couple pages of sketches like this, where I was kind of free thought. And then I did later um, use one of these and do a larger 36 by 48 inch painting, which I developed one of these forms more into a solid figure form where it was uh, clearer that it was a human figure. So, um, again, maybe your style is different than mine, but the approach on the way in which that you can just gather information and use it, um, you know, anything from daily life to found imagery and alter that imagery, um, and then you can kind of just keep your own books, make it your own, and then again, use it simply for the purposes of developing your skills and begin to be more comfortable 
um, because when I first started, I was really, um, you know, totally uncomfortable with finding that compositional plane that I could build upon and what colors and there's so much information it's like you know what am I going to put into my smoothie so I have to start with something so I keep building my skills and maybe you'll get a specific color palette that speaks to you for any set number of you know months or years and then you'll sort of have that but what can you work on for your next skill um, and this is just another great way to do it. So hope that's um, added some valuable information to you. If it has, please hit the subscribe button and um, leave a comment below. I'd love to see how you're using your books to develop your skills. And thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you again soon.